excited to be standing in Dee Nash's cutting garden. Dee Nash is a blogger and a podcaster and also author of the 2030 Somethings Garden Guide. And Dee, thank you so much for allowing us to be here. So glad that you came. It is a beautiful garden that you have here and there's so thank much you. to see. But today <laughs> we are looking at your cutting garden. Cutting garden. So yeah. tell us a little bit about why you first established a cutting garden. Well, I thought I was going to cut flowers. I mean, I think that's the idea behind a cutting <laughs> right. garden, right? But I can't to take in and enjoy and right? enjoy inside my house. Yeah. But I can't make myself do it because they're so pretty out here that I just leave them. <laughs> so it's not so much a cutting garden, sort of. So tell us a little bit about the selection of plants that you have for the. I cutting do garden. try to get florist varieties of seeds for okay. the stuff that I'm going to cut, and this is one of them: lavender cloud nicotiana. Okay. It makes a good cut flower, and there are also some other nicotianas that are on the block in this area. And one of them is Peach Screamer, then there's Langsdorfii. Okay. Um, but other ones, you know, I have a lot of different things in here that are cutting, like Tithonia. And this one still has the fragrance on it. It does, so that's it nice. smells really good. And it's got these long stems. If you were to do floral arrangement or something like that with them, then you have that to play with. And you want to cut them in the evening when they really open because, you know, during the day they start to close down. Right. Because their pollinators are moths. Okay. So right. that's kind of a cool thing. Nice. Yeah. Plus white, you can see those kind of highlight in the nighttime yeah, too, that white dust. And light pink. Yeah. This is lavender cloud. Okay. I like it the best this year. It's probably my favorite. My favorite thing I'm growing. Excellent. Well, I, I, it's a beautiful plant. And just even the foliage itself. I mean, so Nicotiana is related to the tobacco plant right, with these giant tobacco. leaves here. Mm -hmm. um, so, And you mentioned Tithonia back there, too. Yeah, we have Tithonia and sunflowers. Mexican sunflower, yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. So I, I love the selection. You've got Feverfew, Monarda, a lot of different plants in here that yeah. are going to kind of keep that flowering going throughout the season. Right, because if you're going to do cut flowers, most of the time you want annuals mm -hmm. um, because and you don't want to let them go to seed so you want to be sure and deadhead your zinnias and your sunflowers when they get to a certain point unless you just leave them okay because then you'll get more so do you do anything i i know you're a big pollinator person I am um, a which pollinator. all gardeners should be right we right. should we should embrace the wildlife that comes with the garden but you also <laughs> collect bees uh or, or, or i keep bees yeah i just shouldn't say collect them when that sounds well logic. i kind of collect them i mean it becomes a collection <laughs> you collect plants but you keep bees i do i'm a beekeeper so i discovered when i became a beekeeper that my plants my garden wasn't really made for honeybees. It was really made for our long-tongued bees and our butterflies, which is good too. Uh -huh. But then I had to put in stuff for the short-tongued bees, which are what honeybees are. Okay. So it's complicated. I mean, it's complicated to grow for pollinators. Right. And you have to be willing to let stuff eat your plants. Well, and that's the biggest thing, right, is not right. to spray or, or introduce yeah, I don't any spray chemicals. Anything. No. So ha tell us a little bit about that process of weaning yourself off of yeah a long long time ago I mean I grew roses not for competition but I wanted to grow great roses and so I did use chemicals way back when I had to switch the type of roses I grew to grow stuff that is much more able to handle the stresses of our environment mm -hmm. and then uh, over time it's hard I mean when you go from doing chemicals to trying to grow as organically as possible it's complicated and it takes a while. I say it takes two to three years for your garden to get into balance. Okay. Then once it gets into balance, you can take a little bit of, you know, silvery checker spot damage on your Rebecca and eventually the wasps will come in and clean them up. And that's another thing. Don't be afraid of bees and wasps in the garden. You mm -hmm. know this. Yeah, yeah. Right? Because they aren't going to hurt us here, right? Right. They, they got other things that are more interesting Much than us. more important than us and they aren't trying to defend their home. Right. And right. that's the real reason we all get stung. Yeah. You know. So, Dean, another good point to mention is the fact that, you know, insects have different life stages. And if yeah. you don't recognize it, then you're in trouble, yeah. right? Because yeah. if everybody wants butterflies, butterflies get great press. But butterflies start out as caterpillars. Right, and we all know that. But I think when we're out in the garden, we... <laughs> we see something eating our plants right. and we want to squish it, right? right. Or right. spray it. <laughs> so, I'm okay with squishing a few because that's normal. You know, you're all gonna, they aren't all going to grow up and become butterflies. Right. But I don't spray stuff. Okay. Um, because if you spray stuff... It's, it's really hard, mm -hmm. you know. And um, you're affecting more than just that right. targeted thing. I mean, thing you can sometimes. use BT on caterpillars, yeah. but you got to be careful if you're going to even use BT mm -hmm. to use it in such a way that you don't spread on everything. Right. Just spread on the one problem you have, maybe. Right. Um, I'm, I'm big on integrated pest management, but I really do nothing first. My friend <laughs> says I'm very zen about that. <laughs> just, so there's damage. Yeah, yeah. And something will come when anything's in, in a large population, something will come and come feed and on eat it. it. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. And the biggest predator of caterpillars in my garden are red wasps. Okay. And so if you have a border patch caterpillar infestation on your sunflowers, if you can hold off for just a little bit, they'll be gone. 
And same thing with Rebecca and Silvery Checker Spot. And the same thing with aphids and ladybugs. Yeah. You know, yeah. I mean, you have to wait. Right. Because it has to have a big enough population so that the thing will come in and kill it. Yeah. So we were, we were talking, too, about the night-blooming Nicotiana and some yes. of the other. You have a lot of night-blooming stuff here. Tell us. Well, okay. that's for the moths because okay. I really love sphinx moths. Mm -hmm. And there's a whole group of sphinx moths out there. They are all not tobacco hornworms like right. everybody or thinks. Or tomato hornworms. Or tomato yeah. hornworms. There's But again, two that is the larva that goes along with, with that beautiful. With a particular sphinx moth. Yeah. Right. So so, but the ones I like tend to like night blooming plants like this lavender cloud, Nicotiana, or that night blooming phlox, which was so hard to start from seed, but now I'm really glad I did. And they do smell good at night. It's enjoyable for you too. All right. So a garden does, doesn't have, a cutting garden just doesn't have to be for you to take your plants inside. No, it can be can for have... a lot of other things too. Mm -hmm. And I love the raised beds. I got to mention those. Okay. So they're actually. brand new. I did it wrong the first time and this time I did it right. And they're four by four and... Bill designed them. I need to give a shout out to my husband who helps me build all this stuff. And we put them together this year and now they're doing really well. But that's that perfect width so that you can reach in reach from all sides. Reach to the sides. middle, right? Yeah. Yeah. Excellent. Just like four foot paths so people can walk. Well, Dee, you have a lovely cutting garden. Thanks Thank so much you. for sharing it with us. Thanks for coming. We hope you enjoyed this video. It's part of our Oklahoma Gardening YouTube channel. You can also find even more videos on our OK Gardening Classics YouTube channel. And join us on social media for great gardening tips, photos, and discussion.